Hello, folks. Uh, Atris, Cupcakes, welcome. Uh, let me see here. All right, looks like everything's good to go. Thanks for joining me once again with uh, Heaven Official's Blessing, a Chinese web novel that we've been working through. We just got to the end of the second major arc, uh, The Adventure in the Desert, and the last chapter was a little bit of a, a cliffhanger. Uh, our hero, Shilian, a fallen god of bad luck, had figured out that his uh, erstwhile companion, San Lang, is actually the ghost king, Hua Cheng. And at the very end of the last chapter, he basically said, I know who you are, you're Hua Cheng, and that's kind of where we left off. Uh, so we are going to jump right back in to the two of them at uh, his little temple, uh, confronting each other's real identities. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Lob Soul. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's open this back up. Chapter 30, Poking the Ghost King, Crown Prince Seeks the Truth. Back still facing San Long, Shilian said, Crimson Rain Sought Flower, your royal highness, the crown prince, San Long replied. Those are those their two official titles, if you'll remember. Hey, Odd Molly, welcome. Shilian finally turned around with a grin. That's the first time I've heard you address me like that. The red-clad youth sat on the mat and adjusted his legs, also grinning. How does it feel? Shilian gave it a thought and replied truthfully. It feels a little different than when others call me by that title. Hmm, how so? Hua Cheng asked. Shi Lian tilted his head, his eyes squinting a little. It's hard to say, it's just... When others called him your highness, it was sometimes emotionless and all business-like, like Wing Ling Wen. Most of the time when people called him your highness, it was laced with a sense of disdain, like intentionally addressing an ugly woman as a beauty, sarcastic. Yet when Hua Cheng called him your highness, those two words were uttered with grave sincerity. So while it was hard to describe, Shi Lian felt when Hua Cheng called him your highness, it was different than when others called him your highness. Because he actually loves and respects you and doesn't think you're a fraud. Ugh. Hey, Jessica, welcome. He continued, That night at Mount Yujun, the groom who took me away was you, right? If you'll remember in the first story arc with the, the demon bride, uh, he was disguised as a bride to try and trick the demon, and a mysterious groomsman showed up and helped him. And it was Hua Cheng. Seeing Hua Cheng's meaningful smirk, Shi Lian realized his words may have meant something else and corrected himself. I, I meant the groom in disguise who led me away was you, right? I wasn't disguising myself as a groom, Hua Cheng replied. Technically speaking, Hua Cheng wasn't wrong. The young man at the time never said he was the groom or anything. In fact, he didn't say a thing at all. He only stopped in front of the marriage sedan and extended his hand. It was Shi Lian who went with him willingly. Fine, then why did you appear at that time, Shi Lian asked. The question only has two answers, Hua Cheng said. First, I came, especially for your royal highness. Second, I was passing by and was free. Which do you think is more believable? Shi Lian counted the number of days Hua Cheng had spent with him and replied earnestly. Which is more believable, I can't say, but you really do seem to have a lot of free time. With his left arm holding his right elbow and his right hand propping his chin, Shi Lian gave Hua Cheng a once-over and nodded. You're quite different from what the rumors say. All right, I'm gonna have to take off my hood, because now that the computer's on, I am hot. Hey, Candy Dreams, welcome. Ugh. <clears throat> Had the bad luck to buy the awesome Silent Hill hoodie right when it's summertime. <laughs> I never get to wear it. Hua Cheng changed his sitting position, but still with a hand propping up his cheek, he watched Shi Lian and said, Oh, and how did you find out that I'm me? The images of the umbrella dripping with blood, the gentle clinking silver chain, and the cold silver vambrace filled Shi Lian's mind. He thought, It's not like you were trying very hard to hide yourself. 
But when words dropped from his lips, they became something else. He said in a serious voice, Even after all the probing, you gave nothing away, so you must be a supreme. He's referring to all the tests that he did to try and figure out if he was a ghost. You're dressed all in red like maples, like blood, and seem knowledgeable of everything, capable of everything, and know no fear. Such a disposition, other than the crimson rain sought flower that even all of heaven fears, there doesn't seem to be any other candidate. So in other words, his behavior makes it so there's only one person he could be. Hua Cheng laughed. Shall I take those words as a compliment? Can't you tell they're all compliments, Shi Lian thought. <laughs> God, these two are adorable when they flirt. They don't even realize the other one's flirting. Sparing so many words, how come your royal highness doesn't question my motives in coming close to you? Hua Cheng asked, his smile curbed somewhat. If you didn't want to say anything, if I asked, would you tell? Or you might not tell me the truth, Shi Lian said. That's not necessarily true. Besides, you can always boot me out. Shi Lian replied, You're so powerful if I booted you out now. If you really wanted to do something bad, couldn't you just change skin and come back? The two were staring at each other, grinning, when just then a small knocking noise broke the temporary silence in the shrine. They looked to where the sound came from, and there wasn't anyone, only that small black clay pot rolling around on the ground. It was the same pot Ban Yu was tucked in. Shi Lian had placed it next to the mat, but somehow it had tipped itself over and rolled to the door. If you'll remember last time, uh, the young mage figure that used to be a friend of Shi Lian's, uh, he magically tucked her away inside of a clay pot. Blocked by the wooden door built by Hua Cheng, it started hitting the door by rolling at it, at it repeatedly. Shi Lian was worried it might break itself, so he opened the door, and the little clay pot rolled itself to the grass field outside. Shi Lian followed it and saw that once the little pot had made it to the grass field, it stood itself up. Even if it was only a pot, it gave the sense that it was gazing at the night sky. Hua Cheng also emerged from the shrine, and Shi Lian called out to the pot. Ban Yu, are you awake? Good thing that when they returned from the desert, it was already deep into the night. Otherwise, if anyone should have seen Shi Lian asking a pot how it was doing, they probably would have thrown a fit. A moment later, the sulky voice of a young girl came from the pot. General Hua... Shi Lian sat down next to it and soothed. Ban Yu, have you come out to stargaze? Why don't you come out? Hua Cheng was leaning against a tree next to them and said, She only just left the Ban Yu ruins. Probably best if she stays in there for a while longer. Shi Lian thought that advice was sound. After all, Ban Yu had been stuck in the ruins for 200 years. The sudden change of pace might be hard to adjust to. Then you best stay in there and heal. This is where I cultivate. You don't have to worry about anything. Don't think about those soldiers and that general anymore. The pot shook twice as if trying to say something. After chewing on his words, Shi Lian spoke up. Ban Yu, the incident this time actually didn't concern you. Your scorpion snakes were... General Hua, I couldn't move at the time, but I heard everything, Ban Yu said gloomily. She's referring to the fact that the heavenly uh, guy, Pei Su, was behind everything, not her. Uh, so she is not guilty. Shi Lian stopped. Only then did he learn that Pei Su only sealed Ban Yu's movement, not her senses. Just as well. Since she'd heard everything, then it was just as well. The clay pot asked, General Hua, what will happen to General Pei Jr.? Shi Lian crossed his arms in his sleeves. I don't know but mistakes will always be punished. After a moment of silence, the pot shook twice, and Shi Lian finally understood it was nodding in agreement. General Pei Jr. is actually not a bad person, Ban Yu said. Is that right? Mm-hmm, Ban Yu replied. He's helped me before. Somehow, Shi Lian's mind was suddenly filled with many things. Ban Yu received beatings. Using the words of other Yang children, she had a face that asked for it. It was a long time after Shi Lian had known her before he learned of it too, since no matter how much beating Gan Yu received, she wouldn't tell anyone. Until one day when Shi Lian saw a group of children pressing her face into the mud and he learned where all the bruises on her came from. But after a while, when he asked her about it, she only remembered that she had to wash the handkerchief from the boy who pulled her out of the pit before returning it and recalled nothing else. 
She remembered no one who beat her. The ones who'd saved her, she remembered for a lifetime. Banyu continued, Although Kamo always scorned that he'd confounded my mind, that I had been completely used, whether he used me or not, it was my own will to open the fortress gates. Shilion didn't know what to say anymore, but somewhere in his heart, he felt soft. A moment later, he patted the clay pot. All right, it's in the past. Oh, by the way, Banyu, the name Hua Ji is fake. I haven't been a general for a very long time. You don't have to keep calling me General Hua anymore. Then how should I address you? Banyu asked. That was actually a good question. If Banyu also called him Your Highness seriously, it'd feel weird. Shilion didn't really care about his address either, he just wanted to change the subject. That's up to you. I suppose it's okay if you keep calling me General Hua. Only there's another one here named Hua, so that might cause some confusion. But then he thought, Hua Ji was a fake name he took from the first word of the title, Flower Crowned Martial God. So Hua Chang may very well be a fake name too. They both coincidentally picked the same surname. Rather amusing. Bye Jeff, see you later. I'm sorry, General Hua, Ban Yu said again. Shi Lian turned back to look at her and said woefully, Ban Yu, why are you always apologizing to me? Did he really look that sorry to people? From within the pot, Ban Yu stated, I want to save the world. General Hua, you said that once, Ban Yu said. Shi Lian looked confused. He hurriedly pressed down on the clay pot. Wait, hold on a sec. Wait for what? Ban Yu asked. Shi Lian took a peek at Hua Cheng, who was still leaning against the tree with his arms crossed, and said in a low voice, Did I really say that? Those words were his favorite saying when he was ten-something years old. In the many hundreds of years thereafter, he shouldn't have uttered them at all. He couldn't believe it. But Ban Yu was firm. General, those were your words. Shi Lian still wanted to struggle. I don't think so. Ban Yu told him sternly and coldly. You did say them. There was once you asked us all what we wanted to do when we're older. Everyone answered, and after you also said, my dream was to save the world, the common people. So that was it. Shi Lian used his hand to cover his forehead. Ban Yu, why would you remember so clearly something so randomly said? Ban Yu was confused. But General Hua, I had thought those words were said very earnestly. Shi Lian raised his head to gaze at the night sky, feeling helpless. <laughs> really? Maybe. I don't remember whatever else I might have said. You also said, do what you think is right, Ban Yu told him. Nothing can block your way. Even if you fall into rotten mud a hundred times, you must get up with determination. A lot like that. <laughs> He didn't need to look back to know that it was Jeff definitely Hua Cheng under the tree who heard and laughed. Even smothering the pot now wouldn't help, and Shi Lian thought inwardly, What nonsense! Why did I keep saying those kinds of things? I'm nothing like that, am I? But I don't know what's right anymore, Ban Yu said. Shi Lian froze. I wanted to do as Hua General Hua said, and save the people, Ban Yu said. But in the end, I destroyed the kingdom of Ban Yu. Her voice was lost. It seemed that no matter what I'd do, the results were all horrible. General Hua, I know I didn't do things right, but can you tell me, where did I go wrong? What should I do in order to do as you've said and save the world? Shi Lian replied, I'm sorry, Ban Yu. How to save the world, the common people? I didn't know the answers to that question back then, and even now I still don't. Ban Yu was silent for a moment, then said dejectedly, General Hua, to be honest, it feels like the past 200 years, I have no idea what I've been doing. What a failure. Hearing her, Shi Lian became more depressed, thinking, doesn't that make me more of a failure? That I've lived 800 years for nothing. Shi Lian left Ban Yu, the little ghost in the pot, to stargaze alone to calm down, and went inside Pu Kui Shrine with Hua Cheng. After closing the door, Shi Lian suddenly spoke up. Ban Yu remained at the pass willingly. It wasn't because she became a savage ghost that she was trapped there. She had always remembered it was her who opened the fortress gates, and had never used any excuse like she was doing it for the people. It was to help the Ban Yu soldiers vent their resentment so they could leave this world sooner, 
that she allowed Kay Mo to lead them to murder her over and over. Shi Lian shook his head. If General Pei Jr. really didn't want to leave those soldiers behind and didn't want the heavens to find out either, he could very well send a clone to secretly descend to take care of them. Why did he have to use that method? Clones don't have the same amount of power, Hua Cheng said. You saw how Pei, Pei Su's clone Azal was. He couldn't take care of Banyu soldiers, so feeding them the living was the fastest and easiest way to disperse their resentment. Why did it have to be so fast? Shi Lian wondered. Maybe it's so your little friend Banyu wouldn't be hanged so painfully as many times, Hua Cheng replied. Shi Lian was silent for a moment. Then what about the mortals? Hua Cheng replied quietly. They're heavenly officials. Of course, a mortal's life is nothing but ants in their eyes. Pei Su is a classic high-ranked god. As long as it wasn't discovered, killing a few hundred people was no different than stomping a few hundred insects to death. Shi Lian glanced at him and recalled that when San Long jumped into the sinner's pit, he wiped out all the Banyu soldiers in a flash. He turned to him and said, Clones don't have the same amount of power? I see your clone is pretty powerful. Hua Cheng arched his brow. Of course, I'm the real thing. Shi Lian turned to look at him, surprised. Huh? This is your true form? 100% authentic, Hua Cheng declared. If anything must be blamed, it would have to be have been how Hua Cheng looked as if he was welcoming Shi Lian to test it out himself. Without thinking, Shi Lian raised a finger and poked Hua Cheng's face. After poking, Shi Lian came to shock and yelped, Oh no! in his head. He was only curious to see what a supreme ghost kin king's face skin would, fake skin would feel like, but apparently his body moved faster than his mind and poked him! What a disgrace! To have someone suddenly poke him. Hua Cheng looked somewhat shocked too, but he was always calm and collected, so his expression cleared instantly. He didn't say anything, but he raised his brows even higher, as if waiting for Shi Lian to explain, and the laughter in his eyes remained. Shi Lian couldn't explain himself. He looked at his own finger, hid it away, and casually said, Not bad. Hua Cheng finally burst out laughing, and crossed his arms with his head tilted. What's not bad? You mean the skin? Uh, it's really well made, Shi Lian said sincerely, but... But what? Hua Cheng asked. Shi Lian stared at his face and studied it for a moment. Then finally, can I see your real face? This time, Hua Cheng didn't respond immediately and dropped his arms. Maybe it was all in Shi Lian's head, but Hua Cheng's eyes darkened slightly, and Shi Lian's heart tightened in spite of himself. That's the end of that chapter. Do 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 do. Mmm. They are so cute. There, there was a little bit of a, a break in the middle of their interactions for some uh, Banyu backstory, but them interacting is just so freaking cute. Uh, that is the end of section 1 through 30, so I have to pull back up the general group of fiction to get to the next section, which is 31 to 50, I think. Where are you? Do, 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 there it is. If you would like to read all this, there is a big old Google Drive, which I can link in the description once it loads. Here we go, 31 to 40. Poking the Great Ghost, Poking the Ghost King. Crown Prince Seeks Truth, Part Two. When the air froze, Shi Lian knew his question may have crossed the line. Although in the past few days, the two of them had gotten along well, if Hua Cheng never revealed his real face and didn't even change back uh, his identity was after his identity was revealed, then he had his reasons, and Shi Lian was in no place to push. Without waiting for his response, Shi Lian widened his smile. I, I was just asking, don't take it to heart. Hua Cheng closed his eyes, and after a moment, he smiled softly. I'll let you see it someday, if there's a chance. If anyone else were to say it, then it'd naturally be perfunctory. Someday usually meant, please forget about it. But it was Hua Cheng who said those words, so Shi Lian felt someday meant someday, and it would happen. That made him even more curious, and he grinned. Then I'll wait till the day you can show me. Let's rest for now. After messing around for half the night, Shi Lian had long since given up on cooking anything and returned to the straw mat. 
Hua Chang also laid down next to him. No one bothered questioning why, after revealing each other's identities, that a god and a ghost could still lay together on a rumpled mat, laughing and chatting, and simply hanging out. The straw mat didn't have pillows, so Hua Chang used his own arm and Shi Lian imitated him, using his own arm too. Uh, welcome, uh, Elbun. Thanks for joining us. He chatted casually. The ghost realm seems so idle. Don't you guys ever need to report back to anyone? Hua Cheng not only had his arm as a pillow, he'd crossed his legs, too. He replied, Report to whom? I'm the biggest there is. <laughs> Besides, we mind our own business. No one bothers anyone. So the ghost realm was formed by many disorganized bands of lost souls and feral ghosts. Shilion replied, Is that so? I thought it'd be like the heavenly court where there's a central government. If that's the case, have you met any other ghost kings before? I have, Hua Cheng said. Even the green ghost Kirong? You mean that lowly vulgar trash? Well, what do I say to that? Shilion thought. Thankfully, he needn't say anything, as Hua Cheng continued. I greeted him, and he ran away. Instincts told Shi Lian that this greeting couldn't have been your regular kind of greeting. Sure enough, Hua Cheng said casually, Then I received the title Crimson Rain Sought Flower. So, when he mentioned wiping out the nest of another ghost, he'd been talking about the green ghost Qi Rong, and this greeting was Annihilation. What an extraordinary greeting, Shi Lian thought. He rubbed his chin and asked, Do you have something against the green ghost Kirong? Yeah, Hua Chang replied. What's that? Can't stand his face. Shi Lian didn't know whether to laugh or cry, thinking, Did Hua Chang challenge those 33 heavenly officials also because he didn't like their faces? The heavens all call him vulgar, and even the ghost realm rejects him. Is that true? It's true. Even Black Water is disgusted with him, Hua Cheng replied. Who's Black Water? Shi Lian asked, then recalled, Oh, is that the one called Ship Sinking Black Water? That's right. He's also known as the Black Water Demon Zhuan. I hope I'm saying that one right. I need to look up some of these names. Shi Lian remembered that this Black Water Demon Zhuan was also a supreme, but the Green Ghost Qi Rong was almost a supreme. So he's the only one that isn't fully a supreme. I'm gonna Google this real quick. Chinese pronunciation, that one. Uh, nope, that doesn't help. Bad job, Google. Here we go. Shu, Shu, Shu Wen, it looks like it should be. Shu Wen, okay. Are you close with this demon Shu Wen? No, Hua Chang replied lazily. There aren't many in the ghost realm I'm close with. Now Shi Lian was curious. Is that so? I thought you'd have many subordinates. Maybe our definition of close is different. Hua Cheng raised his eyebrows. Yeah, in the ghost realm, those lower than supreme have no right to speak to me. <laughs> I love him. It was an exceedingly arrogant statement, but, Wa but Hua Cheng made it sound so indisputable and self-evident. Shi Lian smiled softly. Even though you're not close, you still know about them. You have it pretty good in the ghost realm. There's only so many big names, not like the heavens. There's already so many officials to remember in the upper court, and more waiting to ascend in the middle court. It's like an ocean of names. <laughs> what good is it to remember their names? Don't bother. It's a waste of your brain, Hua Cheng said. <laughs> it's kind of offensive if you can't remember their names. The heavenly officials loved their faces. Hua Cheng clicked his tongue. <laughs> if they can be offended by such a small thing, then they're nothing but narrow-minded trash. After chatting for a while, Shi Lian didn't want to dig too deeply into the subject, lest they touch on something sensitive, so he changed the topic away from the difference between the two realms. He glanced at the closed wooden door and wondered, Ban Yu, that child, I wonder when she'll come back in. The bold words, I want to save the world, returned and reverberated in his head, pouring a million chaotic images into his mind and Shi Lian had to forcibly push them down. Just then, Hua Cheng spoke up. Those were good words. Which ones? Shi Lian asked. I want to save the world, the common people, Hua Cheng replied leisurely. Shi Lian was thunderstruck. 
He flipped around and curled into a shrimp, wishing for another pair of arms so he could cover both his face and his ears. He groaned. So long. Hua Cheng seemed to have nudged closer and said in a serious tone right behind him, Hmm, what's wrong with those words? Hua Cheng wouldn't back down and Shi Lian couldn't win against him, so he flipped back over and said helplessly, It's silly. What's there to be afraid of? Hua Cheng said. To dare speak of the world, whether to save or to destroy, is admirable. The former is harder than the latter, so it's even more respectable. Shi Lian puffed a laugh and shook his head. To dare speak, you have to be able to follow through. You have to be able to achieve it. He laid an arm over his eyes. Oh, all right. I suppose that's nothing. What Ban Yu said was pretty good. I've said sillier things when I was even younger. Hua Cheng laughed. Oh, like what? Let's hear it. Shi Lian was pensive for a moment and smiled softly as he chased his memories. Many, many years ago, there was someone who told me they couldn't live on anymore. They asked me for what reason they were alive and what was the meaning of their life. He glanced at Hua Cheng. Do you know how I answered? It might have just been Shi Lian's imagination, but there seemed to be a light in Hua Cheng's eyes. He asked gently, how did you answer? Shi Lian said, I told them, if you don't know how to live anymore, then live for me. If you don't know the meaning to your life, then make me that meaning and use me as the reason to live. <laughs> as Shi Lian spoke, he couldn't help but let out a small laugh and shook his head. Even now, I don't understand what I was thinking back then. How did I ever have the courage to tell someone to make me the meaning of their life? Hua Cheng was silent, and Shi Lian continued. It really was something that could only have been said back then. Long ago, I really thought I was invincible and fearless. If you asked me to say the same words now, there is no way they would ever leave my lips again. Shi Lian continued slowly. I don't know what happened to that person after. But to become someone's reason to live was already a heavy responsibility. How dare I speak of the world? Silence blanketed. Blank. My mouth is twisting. Clearly I need water. This scene is just so sad. <laughs> Silence blanketed Pukui Shrine. After a while, San Long said softly, Something like saving the world. It really doesn't matter how you do it. But although brave, it's foolish. Yeah, Shi Lian agreed. Hua Cheng continued. Although foolish, it's brave. Shi Lian grinned. Thanks. You're welcome, Hua Cheng said. The two stared at the holy ceiling of Pukui Shrine in amiable silence, and Hua Cheng spoke up again. You know, we've only known each other for so many days. Is it all right for you to say so much to me? Shh. Shi Lian puffed again and waved his hand. What's the problem? Whatever. Those who have known each other for decades can become strangers in a day. We met by chance, and we may part by chance. If we like each other, we shall continue to meet. If we don't, then we shall part. There's no banquet in the world that doesn't come to an end, so I'll say what I want to say. Hua Cheng seemed to have chuckled and suddenly said, If. Shi Lian turned his head to face him. If? Hua Cheng didn't turn around, but continued to look at the dilapidated ceiling of the shrine. Shi Lian observed the left side of the handsome young man's face. Hua Cheng said softly, If I was ugly... Huh? Shi Lian gaped. Hua Cheng finally turned his head slightly. If my real face is ugly, would you still want to see it? Shi Lian was taken aback. Is it? Although there's no real reason, I think your real face mustn't be that bad. Who knows, Hua Cheng said, half-jokingly. What if I'm discolored, disfigured, ugly, monstrous, and horrible? What will you do? At first, Shi Lian thought this line of inquiry was rather fascinating. So the number one ghost king of the ages, feared by the heavens, would care about his looks. But when he thought about it deeply, he didn't think it was funny anymore. If he remembered correctly, in the many rumored backstories of Hua Cheng, one said he was a disfigured child from birth, or something along those lines. If that was the case, he must have grown up discriminated against by others. Maybe it was because of this that he was particularly sensitive about his looks. Thus, Shi Lian chewed on his words. Well, 
He used his warmest, most sincere tone. To be honest, the reason I want to see your real face is only because, you see, we're already like this. Hmm. Hua Cheng piped up. Like what? Well, now we're sort of friends, right? So if we're friends, then we should be honest with each other. So me wanting to see your real face has nothing to do with how you look. You ask what I'll do, of course I won't do anything. Don't worry. As long as it's your real face, I'm sure I'll... Why are you laughing? I'm being serious. When Shilion reached the last part, he could feel the body next to him shaking. At first, for a moment, he had thought, are my words so moving that he's touched like this? And was too embarrassed to turn around to see. But after a while, the soft laughter from next to him very obviously leaked out. Shilion felt rather bummed and placed a hand on his shoulder to give it a little push. Sun Long, why are you laughing so much? Did I say something wrong? Hua Chang immediately stopped shaking and turned around. No, you're very right. Shilion felt even more bummed by, by those words. You're so insincere. I promise you won't find another person more sincere than me in this world, Hua Chang replied. Shilion didn't want to talk anymore and flipped over, his back facing Hua Chang. Forget it. Time to sleep. Don't talk. Hua Chang laughed softly again, then said, Next time, even though he was determined to sleep. Hearing Hua Chang speak, Shilion couldn't help but reply, What next time? Hua Chang whispered, The next time we meet, I will use my real appearance to greet you. There was much to ponder about those words and Shi Lian should have kept questioning him. But after a long night, an unstoppable drowsiness overtook him, and he couldn't hang on and fell asleep. The next morning, when Shi Lian woke, the spot next to him was already empty. He stumbled to get up and dazedly walked around the shrine. When he opened the door, there were no silhouettes to be seen outside. It appeared it was real. The boy had indeed left. However, the fallen leaves had been swept into a pile, and next to that pile was a small clay pot. Shilion took the pot inside and placed it on the altar. Right then, he suddenly discovered that there seemed to be something extra on his usually bare chest. Shilion raised his hand to touch it, and found just below the cursed collar there was an exceedingly thin chain, hanging loose and light. Shilion immediately removed it from his neck. It was a silver chain, and since it was thin and light, he didn't feel there was anything on his body before. Hanging from the chain was a crystal clear ring. Adorable. Hua Chang gave him a ring. Oh, it's so sweet. <sighs> All right, we'll read one more chapter. Chapter 32, The Great in the Great Martial Hall. Crown Prince meets Crown Prince. Shilion knew this ring must be something Hua Chang left behind. He held it in his hand and wondered for a moment. What could this be? When Shilion was still a crown prince, he grew up in the palace of Xianli. The kingdom of Xianli had always reveled in beautiful, precious objects. Collectors were abundant, and the palace itself was therefore glorious and bedazzling. Golden columns, jaded steps, and numerous treasures and precious jewels even the noble children played around with various colored gems like toys. By the looks of this ring, it seemed like it was made of diamond. However, its shape was exquisite. Perhaps even the most skilled jeweler would not be able to craft the ethereal, natural beauty it emanated. Moreover, of all the diamonds he had ever seen, this stone was extraordinarily clear, shimmering like crystal, fascinating and sublime, making it hard for him to determine exactly what it might be made of. Still, even if he couldn't tell what the ring was made of, it was for sure an item of extreme significance. Besides, if it was found around his neck, then this was not something that was accidentally dropped. It was more than likely a gift from Hua Cheng as a keepsake. Shi Lian was a little surprised receiving a keepsake like this. He smiled softly, resolved to take good care of it, and to ask the boy what the gift meant the next time they met. The only place he owned was the broken down shrine. There was nowhere appropriate for him to hide treasure. So after some thought, the best place was on his person after all. Shilion put the silver chain around his neck once more. After returning from running around Mount Yujun and the Ban Yu Pass back to back, Shilion laid in Pukui Shrine paralyzed for a few days. 
If it wasn't for some of the overly passionate villagers who'd come and offer buns or porridge, he'd probably have stayed incapacitated for many more days. He spent his days thus until one day, Ling Wen suddenly sent him a notice. Return to the heavens at once. Judging by her tone, something bad was about to go down. Shi Lian could more or less guess what it might be and was mentally prepared. Is this about the Ban Yu Pass? That's right, Ling Wen replied. When you've returned to the heavens, come directly to the Great Marshal Hall. Upon hearing Great Marshal Hall, Shi Lian froze. Jun Wu was back. I'm gonna Google that one just to be sure. Ju? Ju? So maybe it's. I forgot all these characters show up this early in the story, so I should have Googled this first, but oh well. Okay, Ju Wu. So the N is silent, I guess? Ju Wu? After his third ascension, he still hadn't greeted Jun Wu. Ju Wu. That's gonna be hard to adjust to. As the number one martial god, Ju Wu spent his days deep in cultivation behind closed doors, or was out patrolling the realms, keeping the world secure. Now that Ju Wu was back, Shi Lian couldn't get out of making this trip to the heavens. And so he hiked up to the heavenly capital once more, after only a few days of rest. All manner of gods and immortals had their divine palaces built here, each with their own history and style. Banding together, they formed the great city. Sculpted pillars and mural buildings here, little bridges and streams there. The heavenly court had one main road, the Martial Deity Avenue. Although there were many such roads built in remembrance of Ju Wu in the mortal realm, they were only mere shadows and copies of the real one in the heavens. Shi Lian walked on through the expensive road and headed towards the heavenly court. En route, there were many heavenly officials in a hurry, and not a single one dared greet him. Truthfully, there were usually not many who would greet him when he visited the heavenly court. However, not greet meant no fellow officials would approach him or initiate any conversation, but they would still nod in acknowledgement, as was proper. Right now, everyone was pretending he wasn't there, as if just glancing at him would get them in trouble. If they were in front of him, they would hurry away. If they were behind, they would slow their pace, leaving him a wide berth. Shi Lian was already used to this treatment and didn't think anything of it. After all, he did just drag down the popular and newly ascended General Pei Jr. It'd be more strange if no one stayed away. Yet unexpectedly, as he walked, a voice suddenly called out from behind him. Apparently, Ju Wu's name translates to The Lord I Am. Mmm, big bridges. And basically, he's the Emperor of Heaven. Your Royal Highness! Hearing the call, Shi Lian was amazed, thinking whoever it was that dared call him truly had commendable courage. But when he turned his head back, the junior official that called for the Royal Highness rushed by him and ran towards someone who was walking further ahead. He called as he ran. Jeez, your Royal Highness, how can you forget your identity pass going to the Great Marshal Hall? How would you even get in? A uh, suggestion. It's pronounced like Chi Rong. Thank you, Chi Rong. I'd heard it said the probably the person I heard say it didn't know how to say it either. Uh, Chi Rong. Thank you. Uh, only then did Shi Lian get it. No wonder. Of course, the address, Your Royal Highness, wasn't directed at him. There were a number of crown princes in the heavens, so some confusion wasn't anything extraordinary. Yet when he glanced over and saw the other crown prince, he paused. The young man had thick brows and bright eyes with a wide smile. The smile was vastly different than those of many other heavenly officials. It was pure and genuine without anything behind it, and added an air of youth to his handsome face. However, to have another harsher official like Mu Qing, uh, I'm gonna double check that. I think that one's right. I could be wrong. Ching. Dang it, I'm wrong all the time! I'm gonna have to have a cheat sheet. Oh man. Cheng, it looks like it is. So, Mu Cheng. Well, now it's telling me that the... Okay, yeah, okay, it is Mu Cheng. Brazil came up first, apparently. Mu Cheng. So I guess Q's make, like, a chi H sound. Okay. <sighs> to have another harsher official, like Mu Cheng, provide comment, they would probably call it an air of foolishness. The young man was decked in armor, proud and heroic, but the armor on him didn't give a sense of blood and battle. It gave him an air of royal nobility, candid and brilliant. Shi Lian stopped in his steps and stared at the young man, 
The two in front felt his gaze and turned back to face him. When the junior official saw who it was, his face dropped immediately. Shilion lightly nodded his head and smiled at him. Greetings, your royal highness. The other crown prince obviously was one who didn't mind the everyday details and didn't recognize his face. So when he saw someone greeting him, he immediately returned it with a bright smile and shouted, Greetings! The junior official beside him gave a little push and hurried. Let's go, your highness. We still need to get to the Great Marshal Hall. The young man, still unaware and inconscient, was weirded out by the sudden push. Why are you pushing me? Shi Lian huffed a laugh, and the junior official looked to be even more in a hurry. He urged, The Emperor is probably already waiting for us, so please let's go, your highness! The other crown prince could only give Shi Lian a confused look before turning to leave. Shi Lian stayed where he was as they walked away, and soon whispers from officials of lower ranks floated into the, his ears from afar. Well, that was awkward. The world is such a small place. But they're both officials in the heavens, so it was only a matter of time. If you ask me, General Nan Yang, bumping into General... Oh, Xuan? Sh did, did I say it was Xuan? Sh I am going to make a cheat sheet for next time. Xuan. Xuan? Xuan? And then the last name is Xuan. This is another new guy. Oh my god, it's pronounced like Jen? Oh no, this is going to be so hard. Xuan Jen. Xuan Jen. Bumping into General Swan Jen is more exciting in a fair. Uh, I think that guy will come up later. I'm not sure who that is. There's a lot of generals. I don't remember all their names off the top of my head. What's the rush? They'll be bumping into each other real soon. They're all waiting at the Great Marshal Hall, aren't they? Suddenly someone commented. Never mind a small world. It's people comparing each other that does it. People really are so different from one another. They're both crown princes. But His Highness Tai Hua is truly no noble. Double guessing all my pronounce T. Tai? Okay, so I was right. It's Tai. Sometimes I'm right. Tai Hua is truly noble. If it was him, he wouldn't do anything shameful, even when falling from grace. The kingdom of Yang'an was more prosperous than the kingdom of Xianli, after all, so of course the crown prince of Yang'an would be stronger than that of Xianli. How the grass grows depends on the land it grew on. Simple logic. So the prince that just left was the prince of Yang'an which was one of the two countries involved in the war that we were just discussing in the previous chapter, Ban Yu and Yang Ang, and Shi Lian was kind of caught between the two. Uh, we're going to get a little more uh, into the background of Yang Ang this chapter, this section. Arc, I guess, is the best word for it. Oh boy, this is so many words I'm going to say wrong, and I'm not going to have time to look them all up, so I'm going to just do my best. <laughs> the Northern Territory belonged to the Palace of Mingguang, the martial god Pei Ming. The Western Palace, Qi Ying, was Chuan Yizing? Yizing? I'm saying all these so bad. The Southeast Palace of Nanyang was Feng Jin. The Southwest Palace of Xuan. Hmm, I just looked this one up. Xuan. Xuan Jen. Xuan Jen. Xuan Jen was Mu Qing. And the one of the Eastern Territory belonged to the Palace of Tai Hua. The martial god Lang Chuang I'm not gonna I'm 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 gonna butcher it. I have no guess. So they just named the the various territories and who owns them. When he was immortal, uh Lang I'm just gonna call him Long. I don't know how to say Q I A N Q I U. Let me Q I A N Q I U. I didn't realize we'd get this far. Oh, wow. It doesn't know the pronounce. Oh, no. <laughs> it can't pronounce it either. When he was immortal, he was a crown prince like Shi Lian. However, he was the crown prince of Yang'ang. The kingdom of Yang'ang was the country that was built after the fall of Xianli. And the founder of Yang'ang was the rebel general who successfully overthrew the royal capital of Xianli. When Shi Lian drifted in the mortal realm, he had also visited the east and naturally knew that the crown prince of Yang'ang had ascended. As heavenly officials, it would be inevitable for them to bump into each other, so we didn't think much of it. Maybe to anyone else, the gossiping whispers, albeit not really whispers, would probably never be heard for fear of retribution. But those words were uttered without fear of Shi Lian hearing, maybe even hoping for something exciting to happen should he overheard. So, Shi Lian pretended to have heard nothing and casually walked away. Thank you so much for your help, my friend. I will have to write these down once we're done reading. Just then, another voice came from behind. Your Highness! 
Not again, Shi Lian thought, but this time, when he turned around, it was someone addressing him for real. Ling Wen, with her dark circled eyes and arms full of scrolls, approached him. Everyone has gone to the Great Marshal Hall for the meeting. Be more mindful once you've reached the hall. Shi Lian understood. What do you think General Pei Jr.'s sentence will be? Exile, probably, Ling Wen replied. That's actually not too bad. Not too severe, Shi Lian thought. Exile was considered a temporary banishment for officials who'd committed crimes, meaning the term of punishment was negotiable, and there might still be opportunities for resuming duties. If one day they should be found to be on their best behavior, they might get fished back up. Maybe in 30 to 50 years, maybe 100 or 200. But to Shi Lian, this not too bad was judging by his standards. To General Pei, it would be a completely different story. Shi Lian remembered another thing and said, Oh yeah, Ling Wan, how does the search for the boy with the human face disease from Mount Yujun I told you about last time? Do you have any news? I'm really sorry, your highness. I don't have anything at the moment. We're working on it, Ling Wen replied. Uh, there was a young boy that he helped in the first arc that vanished and ran away, and he had the human face disease. Dun dun dun. Even for a heavenly official, to find a person in such a vast world was not an easy task. Although the heavens might be faster, it was still only a difference of ten years in the mortal realm versus one year in the heavens. Shi Lian could only express gratitude. Thank you for your hard work. Just then, they reached the end of the avenue, and a majestic palace came to view before him. The palace had stood through the ages, yet it only showed enduring excellence and none of its antiquity. Layers of glazed golden shingles pyram pyramided? Pyramided. That's a... Not a, don't think that's a word, but okay, they pyramided. I guess that means they, they came together in an angle? <laughs> Blinding in their scintillation. Shi Lian raised his head and glanced at the great martial hall beneath the golden roof. The words written with power and with vigor were exactly the same as a few hundred years ago, unchanging. He lowered his head and stepped into the hall. Within, numerous heavenly officials had already gathered, either in their own groups of two or three or by their lonesome, standing in silence. The only ones who may enter the hall were the heavenly officials who had officially ascended. All imperial sons of heavens or indomitable overlords, each bursting with spiritual might. They eyed each other in silent pride and judgment, their splendor overwhelming. At this time and place, everyone held their breaths, not daring to make a sound. On the throne at the very end of the hall sat a martial god decked in pure white armor. The martial god was refined and dignified, his eyes closed and his lips unspeaking, poised and solemn. Behind him was the magnificent great martial hall, but beneath his feet was a pure white snowy peak. As if sensing Shi Lian entering the hall, he opened his eyes. That pair of eyes were obsidian black, but bright and clear as if formed by the melted snow of a lake frozen for millions of years. When he blinked opened his eyes, the martial god smiled softly. Jean Li, you've come. Shi Lian lowered his head in a bow and said nothing. When Zhu Wu spoke, he was not loud, but his deep voice echoed through the entire great martial hall. Then all the eyes of the officials focused on Shi Lian and he understood immediately. It appeared this meeting wasn't for discussing General Pei Jr. and the Ban Yu Pass scandal. The spotlight, it seemed, was on him. Oh, my poor boy. Uh, well, thank you all for joining me. We've made a little progress. Uh, this one's kind of a short one because I've been off for a little bit and a lot of the general folks couldn't make it today. But uh, in a little bit, we're going to do a uh, game commission. Handsome Ratch wanted to watch Transformers Devastation, so we're going to stream that in a minute if you want to join us. If you like what I do and you want to see more of it, you can become a member on Patreon or YouTube for as little as 99 cents a month, and the link in the description can show you all the many, many ben benefits you can get from doing so. Uh, we'll have more of this story next week. Uh, Tolkien will be Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow is probably just going to be games. I haven't had time to prep another uh, uh, lesson yet. Uh, the next lesson will probably be on Taoism and uh, Lao Tzu is what I'm working on. So hopefully that'll be Thursday. And I think that's everything for right now. Silent Hill Symbolism will be out in a week or two. Uh, Brad's working on the edit. The script is written. So hopefully that'll be soon. 
Um, and that's everything I can think of. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye.